Here's my vintage toy store on eBay and what's sold, episode four. <laughs> Welcome back YouTube friends, thank you for joining us. I'm Joshua Tatsui. I run a small business selling vintage toys online. I love to buy, sell, and collect vintage toys. I buy storage units, people's personal collections, and on a rare occasion I go to garage sales and estate sales as well. It is the Christmas season, so I thought I'd just share one of the really cool sales instead of going over a random cool thing. This is a 1986 Mad Magazine, volume one through four, made by Russ Cochran. There are four of these. Very cool cover art. This is a very rare set. I had this listed for about $440 plus shipping. It went for $390. Mine was probably on the cheaper end of what was listed on eBay and I wanted it to sell and so I accepted an offer for $390. Um, all the other ones listed on eBay are probably in the five to 700 range. Um, this one's in really good condition. There is one little mark right here. But other than that, it is in great condition. Very unique and very, very, very rare set. I mean, $400 for comic art. Kind of crazy. It's from 1986 vintage very cool set up next is a vintage japanese wind up it is not a super old one from like the 60s and 70s it's more probably like 80s 90s it is all plastic it is made by ono i can't read this unfortunately even though i am japanese ono is my cousin's last name it looks like a cheap little wind up toy these toys are actually collectible the person that actually bought this is a collector of specifically this little style of vintage Japanese plastic panda wind-ups and they actually sent me a picture of the other ones that they have they were very curious and asked me about the dimensions and the sizing of this one because they were also um, going to buy other ones um, so it doesn't look like much it feels very light and plasticky and cheap um, this one went for $24 and it is collectible <laughs> up next is a kind of unique Lindbergh model kit it's all plastic it is a 1979 Cadillac DeVille and it has like a, a hopper action kind of um, remote control to it it is something that I did not think was worth any money my dad knew exactly what it was I was actually going to donate this to Goodwill because I didn't think it was anything it feels like a plastic little you know dollar store toy um, but he knew exactly what it was because he's come across them before and went for $75. It feels very cheap. Um, however, it happens to be a rare Lindbergh model and the hopper action. <laughs> Up next is a vintage little pewter figure. It's from 1984. It is called a Partha Mythical Pewter Fairy. And these are usually painted by a collector or something. And this one's unpainted, so newish condition. 1984 stamped, pewter stamped. Uh, one for thirteen dollars. Up next is a 1994 Viper V4 Cobra Infantry Soldier from the GI Joe sets. Um, this one I bought from an individual's old toys from when he was growing up. He would go to the local toy shop and buy all these figures used. He had a bunch from the mid 90s. This one's from 1994 and I actually went piece by piece through every single one of his GI Joe figures because I wanted to make sure I gave him you know a proper amount of money and so random gi joe figures um can go for hundreds of dollars they just have to be the the specific one um he unfortunately had none that were worth hundreds he did have some worth 80 to 150 dollars um, this one was 21 dollars and so very cool came with his two weapons and his gun there are unfortunately no missiles um, he also comes with his stand which all gi joe figures come with yeah one for 22 dollars 1994 viper v4 infantry soldier up next is a doctor who figure this is the fourth uh, doctor who this one is tom baker it is battery powered it talks 
and it has a knitted scarf on it and it went for sixty dollars very collectible doctor who has been going on for decades it is a tv series that probably started in the 60s i would guess and it is still going up next is a vintage little kittles rosebud figure these ones are unique they're very mini and they come in a perfume bottle and so kind of just pull off the top it opens up and you get a little doll figure this one is rosebud they're basically unplayed with the hair is still in you know mint condition um, so it probably never even came out of this perfume bottle here we got two little die cast cars this one is a brooklyn models it has burma shave on it and it went for 19 dollars it is in mint condition not new in box and air or anything but there's no scratches or anything it's a very detailed car went for 19 dollars and the second one is a Tootsie toy. It's probably from the 50s. It doesn't really have an era marking on it or whatever, um, but this one is in amazing condition. It sold for $15 and it sold immediately. Um, they aren't rare necessarily, but this one is in very good condition. Um, the red paint is still pretty good. There's scuffs, obviously. It's from the 50s. Um, it's a great grill. And this one, it may actually be repainted. I'm not really sure. Um, has the wrecker little backing um, but overall in amazing condition and that is why it's sold like that up next we have a set of three trading cards these are the universal monsters of the silver screen horror monsters are very collectible this i bought from a garage sale he had a very cool garage sale he's like a harley davidson writer and had a bunch of trading cards and horror toys and then his kid collected a bunch of models and um, lego sets so it was a very cool garage sale i probably spent five to six hundred dollars there um, i was the first one there at 8 a.m on a saturday morning um, these went for 17 dollars there's three of them they are the biochrome set this is lon cheney jr we have claude rains and gail sondergaard i believe these are all actors and actresses in horror movies from maybe the 50s to 60s era. Up next is a Mighty Max from 1994. This is the same collector that I bought the G.I. Joes from. This one is the Doom Zone Squishes Fly. Um, it is the complete set. Mighty Max is very many figures. Um, I believe McDonald's actually sold, or the Happy Meal toys were Mighty Max for a while back in the day. And this one has, um, Mighty Max is just a little play set, so it has a little fly inside. The Mighty Max figure, which actually sells well, this little individual piece on its own, and then a little playset to play with. And the villain, a little insect figure. Um, this little playset, um, and it all fits in this little fly's body. I've actually sold a handful of these for the $60 to $80 range, and they all happened to be complete as well. Only one graphic novel sold this weekend. This is a Teen Titans Life and Death. Again, Great pictures, it's a paperback, all color and glossy. Went for $15. Up next is a 2013 Tonka. This is the 354. It is the Mighty Diesel Crane Truck. Um, older Tonkas go for great money, especially if it was this size. This one's a 2013, so it's not old. It's in really good condition. It went for $34. It has a handle to control the up and down of this, and then a crank to control the up and down of the crane. Up next is not something I usually share on the channel, um, but this one was just really cool that I like personally. It is a Nautica Challenge. Um, it's like the J-Class, you know, like yacht kind of style. Um, it has the vintage coloring. And this one I sold as brand new, even though it's vintage, it still has the tag on it. That says how it was originally at Hudson's for $210. It is a down coat, so it is nicer and warmer. Um, yeah, just thought it was very cool. It went for $90. Here we have a Pokemon Master Trainer game from 2005. Um, specific Pokemon games actually sell very, very well. Um, this one went for $57. I have recently just sold another one for, I think it was like... 80 to 100 dollars and that one was not complete but incomplete was worth 
you know, like $150. Um, this one went for $60-ish, and it's a Pokemon game. Never played it. It's very, very sellable, though. Pokemon is huge. Up next is a Funko. This one is a Funko Vision. It's in a little old TV tube. It's all PVC. This one is the Looney Tunes Gossamer and Mad Scientist. And um, this one is actually a little bit rarer. Um, it's a vintage set. Um, it's not in the perfect condition. The backdrop is a little bit um, warped. Um, it is supposed to look like a little TV set. Um, Funko is very popular right now, uh, but people don't realize that it has actually been around for a while. This one went for about $90. Very cool set. Again, uh, more on the rarer side. Uh, mine was probably one of the cheaper ones on eBay, and I believe most of the ones available on eBay were not in the United States. So, yeah, kind of an interesting little set. This is somebody's old alphabet blocks. And these went for a whopping $400. These ones are early 1900s alphabet blocks. I believe these actually are going to be like display pieces at like a country club or something. Um, very ornate in really, really good condition for, you know, 100 year old plus wooden blocks. The, uh, the letters are carved and then painted and the paint is on every single one. Um, so it's very ornate, has a pattern. And then on the sides where it says the numbers and it has pictures and words, um, every single picture is legible, which is kind of insane um, that they're in this condition because these are like play toys and they're wooden blocks. Um, and again, you know, 100 plus years of usage or sitting in a box. Um, there are about 98 in total here. There are two different sizes, these big ones and then these small ones. Um, I was looking at some of the words on here to try to place and date them. The fire trucks are like steam engines on the pictures. And then they spell airplane, A-E-R-O-P-L-A-N-E, um, -E, which is the British way, I believe, of spelling it, um, but just kind of adds to the age of these blocks. And now to the train sets. At the end, I will go over this train, which is the most expensive train. Um, so we'll save this for last, um, but all together, um, we will go through about $4,000 worth of trains here. We'll start with N scale and move on to HO scale. Up first is a Roadmasters N scale 1941 Chevy steak body. It's a little truck. It needs to be built and went for $10. Here we have two N scale locomotives made by Atlas. These both happen to be GP7 Santa Fe's. They sold together to the same buyer for $180. So about $90 individually. Um, and the only difference between these two is the numbers painted on the trains. Moving on, we'll go to the Cato sets. I have a handful of these sets that sold. This first one is an F3A, F3B, Southern Pacific. They're both N scale. And they sold as a set for $142. And this Cato is a passenger car, actually. It's still N scale. It is a Santa Fe Topeka. It is a business car. Went for $90. Here we have two identical sets of the F7A, B, San Fe locomotives. They are two complete sets, $250 each. So this total sale was $500 plus. Went to the same buyer, bought two sets, basically brand new. And now we will move on to the HO scale train sets and train cars. This first one is a Blackstone models. It is a narrow gauge freight car. It is the Denver and Rio Grande set. This one went for $90. I have actually sold some very fancy Blackstone models as well. I said a set of I sold a set of three before, and that was like the Chili train liner or something. It was a limited edition something, but I went for like six or seven hundred dollars. Uh, this one for a single train for ninety dollars is still also a very good sale on an HO scale train. Here's another HO model. It is a Northwestern Models Chicago and Northwestern Standard Depot. So this is one of the models you would have to build for your little display of HO scale trains and uh, village or whatever you have with it. Um, this one is a standard depot, like the train station kind of thing. It is a laser kit crafted from original drawings. Um, I believe this one is a wood laser cut set. Up next we have a Mini Metals HO scale international metro van. And this van happens to be advertising Wonder Bread. Again, 
It will go on your display for your HO trains. Up next, we have a Tai Chi train group uh, HO scale steam wrecking crane, 820 tons. This one would have to be built. It is three and a half millimeters tall and it went for $24. Here we have the very cool Zephyr trains. This one is made by Broadway Limited Imports. It is an HO scale. This is the California Zephyr, the silver bridle. This one went for $180. These are a very desirable piece with the dome observation deck on top. They are very pretty. Um, again, a very ornate piece. I have a bunch of these Zephyrs is what they're called with the observation deck on top. Um, they, have, they tend to be more expensive than you know similar quality, similar branded trains, um, but the Zephyr line specifically is worth more money. So a very cool piece. Perfect example, another Broadway Limited Imports HO scale train. This one went for $85. It is a Pennsylvania P70 passenger car. So again, same brand, maybe not the similar quality of a tier of the brand, because um, that one is probably a brass. Um, it went for $85 and it is a passenger car. Up next, we have HO locomotives from Stuart Hobbies. These are brands I have never sold from before. This one is the Baldwin VO660 Phase 3, Chicago Northwestern. And here we have the Baldwin VO1000 Santa Fe. They went for $45 a piece. Right here, again, I have Stuart Hobbies HO scale locomotives and B locomotives, but dummy units. So I actually have two sets here. One set of AMBs and another set of AMBs. Each set went for $100. They're both brand new in package. The inside trains and, and bodies are actually sealed. So the, the body is sealed. And then also the locomotive or like the weights are sealed. This one is the weights and sealed because it doesn't have, have an engine. So it's called the, the B units or dummy units because they don't really need two engines for the train set. The front unit, the A unit, has the engine. The B unit in real life would have an engine. However, for the looks of a you know basement display or whatever, you just need the looks. And so you don't actually need the engine in there, so you don't need to be paying for the second engine. These went for $100 a piece, so I have $200 worth of Stuart Hobbies A and B locomotive sets. And now for the grand finale. This is a Challenger Imports Chicago, Burlington, and Quincy Twin Cities Zephyr. We just talked about the Zephyr line. This one is an original train, plated and fully decorated. Um, originally from the store, this was from the Displains Hobby Store. This one costed $1,680. So $1,680 was its retail maybe 20 years ago. This set is a very limited edition set. When it was produced, Challenger Imports only produced 43 sets. So there are only 43 of these boxes in existence. These Zephyrs only have 43 brothers and sisters. And so this set sold for two grand, um, exactly two flat. Um, I had some nice messages with the buyer. And so we talked out a fair price and I think he was very happy and I was very happy and he was a pleasure to work with. And that's everything YouTube friends. Thank you for joining us. It was a busy, busy weekend of sales and that is the holiday season. Now I'm gonna go and ship everything for like the next six to eight hours. Uh, but that's business, very cool stuff sold. If you like this, please like and subscribe and watch more.